Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk, and today we're going to be looking at dessert wines. A lot of people have emailed for dessert wines, and dessert wines are really magical wines. They're wines you tend to love when you first get into wine, uh, and then really you really appreciate them as your palate develops and you really get into wine. I'm a huge dessert wine fan. They're great, great after-dinner drinks. They're great to drink by themselves. They go great with foie gras, which is one of my favorite foods. Um, though you can only eat so much. It's just a tremendous wine in general, the whole concept of a sweet wine, when they're done right, and I'm not talking about Mad Dog or Boone's Farm, I'm talking about well-made dessert wines, are just really amazing. And so, you know, it's funny, when you first get into red wines and white wines and get into serious wines, you think of sweet wines as lower or not as powerful or not as serious because you think of the white Zinfandels and things of like that. But some of the greatest wines in the world, Chateau de Cam or the Tokais from Hungary, are the most expensive and the most sought after wines in the world. So, without further ado, I've got four wines from four different countries. Let's just jump right into it. This is the 2001 Peter Lehman Botrytis Semillon. This is a late harvest Semillon, so the Semillon grape, right in the Barossa Valley which is the premier area in all of uh, Australia. Now, dessert wines tend to get picked late, so they get residual sugar, so the sugar contents get up, they begin a noble rot or a rotting process, and, uh, and that, that's really where they get their, uh, their sugar contents from. So, um, Peter Lehman's always been a, a great producer, they make great Shirazes. Let's see what we think of their own one, uh, Semio. As you can see, amazing golden color, just really, really, you know, golden, dark, almost almost brownish golden color. The alcohol is a little high on this on the nose. Um, again, only 12%, but it's coming through, which concerns me. This is a nice, nice dessert wine. It's a little awkward on the finish. I don't really love the finish. It's a little bit, it's a little bit off. It, it reminds me a little bit of a, I don't know, kind of like green and brown flavors, kind of like earthy soil flavors, but like wet dew, not corked. And I know a lot of people have asked in some of the comments, is this wine corked? Are you sure it's not corked? This wine is not corked. It just doesn't have a pleasant aftertaste. The body and the mid palate were nice. There's nice apricots on the beginning. But it falls short a little bit for me. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't love it. A lot of people are going to Australia for value. There's a lot of great fifteen-dollar Australian wines that tend to get ninety-three, ninety-four points, and I find a lot of them to be great. I'm just not, just not feeling this Peter Lehman. Uh, Number two, BV Muscat. And again, BV is one of the famous wineries in Napa. This is a non-vintage dessert wine. This is their Muscat grape. Let's see what we think of it. 18% alcohol, big boy. Again, you're gonna see nowhere close to the same color or complexity. Um, let's see what happens here. Nice, it's got a nice kind of Frascati kind of nose. Frascati's a white grape uh, from Italy. What I mean by that is fresh and vibrant. A Little bit of apricot. Dried peaches, dry peaches. Oh, this is not good at all. Oh man, I mean, it's gonna actually be. I almost need for the first time ever. I almost need water. Um, that's gonna be a tough, tough flavor to get a, away from. Uh, I should be able to. I we don't have water anywhere. That um, the alcohol is way too high. The acidity is clear as day. It's not well made at all. This is a very poor effort for a dessert wine. I'm, I'm sorry, BV, but this is not one I'm looking to recommend. I actually, and it sells so much, I thought it was going to be good, but I haven't had it in a while, so I don't know. Let's just skip along. Chateau Fio, 1998 Sauterne. Sauterne is really widely considered some of the great dessert wines in the world. Many of you know Chateau de Chem. That tends to be the one that gets the most accolades. You know, two, three hundred dollars a bottle for a full bottle. Um, the Sauterne grape, the Sauterne region, the grapes that are allowed are Sauvignon Blanc, Semillon. They have amazing aromatic nose. You know, what's funny on this nose, I almost get the Muscadel, which is the third grape 
from the Sauternes that's allowed, but they don't use it that much. So it's really Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. Uh, Sauternes is very sought after. In great Bordeaux vintages or great Sauternes vintages, the prices go through the roof. You know, it's $50, 60 $70 a bottle. People buy cases. People love Sauternes. Sauternes is really the classic dessert wine. It's a Bordeaux wine. Sauternes is within Bordeaux. Very nice. Also a little bit too acidic. I'm, you know, I'm not sure if it was the previous one that really got me there, but I don't think so. The nose is very, very exotic. Pineapple juice right on the nose. I mean, just amazing how you can smell that. I wish you could smell this right now because it's pineapple juice, people. So it turns 50 kilometers southeast of the town of Bordeaux. Again, late harvest, great wines. You know, 1990, 1990 Chateau de Cam is one of the greatest wines I've ever had. I, I'm just a huge fan of Sauternes. This is a great little value. The VO is a small producer. 98 is not a great year. You know, we, we, we just have this uh, laying around. I thought it would be interesting to taste where it's at at this point. It's showing very well. It's got a little too much acidity. But again, with a nice piece of foie gras or asparagus lobster. If you're a big lobster fan, I could not recommend any other wine more so than a Sauternes or most dessert wines, for that matter. So if you're ever out eating at a nice place and you're ordering lobster, ask them if they have any sauternes. It's a tremendous combination. This is an excellent, this is, this is a very solid wine. I know last, you know, yesterday's episode, we've gotten into a heated battle on comments about how I score. And again, you know, I hope my tasting notes are more important than the actual score I put on it. I do use scores because I think they do bring a value. A lot of people poo-poo scores and why is everybody into scores, especially the wine nerds and the inner circles that I run with. But I think they do show a value to the customer to, you know, give you a range. And obviously everybody's scoring system is different. You know, just to recap for a quick second, for me, 85, you know, 80, 83 to 85 is just, you know, average wine. 86 to 88 is slightly better, okay. 88, I think, is a nice wine. 89, I think, is a, is a very adequate wine, of almost pretty good. 90, to me, is a very good wine. 90 to 91. 92 to 94 is extremely good. 95 to 97 is exceptional. 98, 99 is classic, and 100 is almost unachievable. You know, just as good as any wine you've ever had. But again, you know, without nitpicking, I think tasting notes are much more important. Read what the critics are saying. I don't want to go into a tangent about wine reviews right now, but, it, you know, considering yesterday's episode, I throw it, throw it in. This is really cool. I'm really excited to try this. This is the Chateau N.A. 2000 Azu Ascensia, Hungarian Tokai. The town of Tokai and the Tokai wines have been legendary for thousands of years. This is the wines that the czars in Russia and the kings and queens of the world have always sought after. This is Europeans' most sought after wine by far. I mean, it's amazing how big these wines are in Europe and, and obviously very big in the U.S. as well, but they're pretty expensive and a lot of people don't recognize them or know them. And so um, the following hasn't been quite as big in the U.S. As you can see, the color is extremely golden. Tokai, the, really, the real uh, grape is ferment which is the grape that they tend to use. The town of Tokai is 125 miles east of Budapest. The color is always great. Now, this is the Azu Ascensia, and Ascensia is the top classification for Tokai. It is the free-running juice from the, when they put the grapes on top of each other. All the grapes, the juice that comes from free run, that's what goes into this. This is pure juice, not pressed, not crushed. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, I think it's going to be amazing, but the quality that this is rated as is amazing. You know, that doesn't happen often. And I have a big meeting tonight, so I don't want to get sloshed here, but wow, this is incredible. There's such a fundamental difference between this wine and the other three wines that it's almost remarkable. If you can afford to reenact this tasting and you're willing to give up your dollars on these two wines, you will find that this is a world-class effort. If you drink Chateau de Cam, or if you like dessert wines and you spend that kind of money because there's a lot of $70, $80 dessert wines, this wine is 
absolutely worthwhile. Now, most Essencias tend to be three, four hundred dollars. I know this producer is under a hundred dollars, so this is a quite a value. Chateau Na, this is unbelievable. Wow, I would even rate this about as high as a ninety-five. This is as good as a dessert wine as you can really put out there. There's really no flaw. I can really score it as high as I'd want to. The mouthfeel, the way it covers your palate, it's almost like syrup, but it's wine, which is great. And it, it's got, obviously, those classic apricot and pear flavors, honeydew, little caramel. This is an exotic wine, well worth trying. If you ever have a chance, please try a Tokai. Now, you'll see there's petunios, five petunios, four petunios, six petunios. Those are classifications. The higher the petunio, the better. It goes up to six, and then you get into the Essencia level. But you should try them. If you have any questions about Tokai, it's a little complicated. Zap me an email. But you should really try one. Definitely go out and try a Hungarian Tokai. I'm a little disappointed with these two efforts over here. But the thing is, is that dessert wine should be part of every single wine drinker's repertoire. Even if you don't like sweet wines, you don't think you like sweet wines, you've got to try different ones because the four wines are so fundamentally different. Even though I use some of the same terms, the mouthfeel and the complexity, totally different. Dessert wines, let's try them. We'll see you next time.